rest of us didn't do. I, I want you to know that there's nothing that you've done that the rest of us are not guilty of. You got to know that before God, it says our best efforts, our be as good as we could ever be is just garbage before God. It's filthy rags. That's what the Bible tells us. So you need, to feel, you need to feel among equals today. We're equal. And when, I, when I'm sharing, I don't, you know, I don't necessarily like to be up here because I'm not talking down to you. I'm talking to us. I, I'm speaking something that I need to practice every day. I'm, I'm talking about something that I had trouble with and am still right now learning how to walk through. You know, um, it would be fabulous, just, just the best, if I had 100% prayer results. And I'm still not there yet, but I'm getting there. You notice? I'm getting there. I'm saying what the Word tells me. He's not finished with me yet. I, I, I just, I, I love that. We, we can just know, okay, Lord, I'm in a hurry, but you're obviously not, so I'm going to take it on your speed. You know, he, God's got good plans for us. You know, in Jeremiah 29, 11, I, I just love that. I go over that all the time. I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to bless you, not harm you. Plans for a future and a hope. Do you know that God has given you every tool you need to receive his best? You know, Jesus already paid for it. That was the seed sown. Jesus was the seed sown for you. The blood that was spilled paid for every infirmity to be healed. It paid, I, I, you might not agree with me, but I'm going to say it, it paid for every bill to be paid. If his name is Jehovah Jireh, do you know what El Shaddai means? The many-breasted one. I used to be so offended when I would see those pictures in India and they would have these goddesses with just breasts all over. And I said, how perverse. Well, I was misunderstanding that. You know what that means? There's enough for everyone. There's, there's a breast for everyone. When I was little, I had a pig. And it had one too many pigs for the number of tits it had. And we'd have to pull one off and put the runt on. And we saved the runt. But it took effort. I want to tell you something today. Your little prayer request is not going to break God. Your little prayer request is not going to shut down heaven. It's not going to be like your computer where it goes overload. Grab a tit and suck. I, that's what I'm telling you. Be a pig and suck as much as you want. But the decision is yours. It's yours. You can have the life you want. I want that's the encouragement I want to give you. It can be as good or bad as you want. But you can have as much as you want. You can be just like David with the heart after God. You think I was vile? Watch this. You know, why not sell out to God? Why not just say, Lord, I believe your word. I believe everything you said. I believe that your blessings are for me. And this is the point I want to come to. Do you know that this building is not the church? And Brother Jimmy and Sister Marlene are not the church. And Brother Otis and Sister Vera are not the church. We are the church. And in the book of Acts, it said, these signs shall follow them who believe. Well, that was one of the things that was bothering me. That was one of the things that when I put my head down at the red light, I was saying, what signs are following? Where are my signs? Well, you know, what things are happening when I pray for other people? You know, all of the personal prayers you have, that's just to get you ready to go out into that army. If you, if you truly believe Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, anything you can imagine, he's going to dump it on you. Put his kingdom first. He's got a plan for your life. He has got a purpose for you. And the church is not just Brother Jimmy and Sister Marlene. It's not just Otis and Vera. It's not just Gwen and Russell. It's all of us. It's us affecting our neighborhoods. And look, that's what all of this is for. The devil wants you not to believe that God will heal you. And he doesn't want you to believe that he'll heal anybody else either. He just wants you to sit quietly in your seat and take life of its, as it's been for the last 30, 40 years. And I want you to know I'm not willing to do that. I will not do that. I look at that many-breasted one, the God that's got more than enough. If there's more than enough, if it's there for me and I'm suffering, then I'm a fool. If there's something there for me that I can have, then I need to stir myself up enough to figure out what it is. And in my case, and I really believe in many people's cases, it's what we're saying. The Bible tells us that we're snared by the words of our mouth. 
we're, we're, we're hung. It, it, it ta- our mouths bind us. If we're constantly cursing us and our children and our finances and our house, we don't say anything. I, I'm telling you, ask my mother. We do not talk about anything that is not edifying to God. We've made it a, a priority in our family, in our personal lives, only to edify God with our mouths and only to say what the Word says. It's a little awkward at first, I have to tell you, but it's worth the fight. Two weeks ago, I'm not exaggerating, almost everything that we had been declaring for four years came to pass. And it was God who did it. We did what he said, and he did what he said. We said what he said, and he did what we said. If you will say what God says, he will do what you say. I'm serious. Listen, this is to prepare you to go out. Now, the next part of this. He wants us to raise the dead, cast out devils, heal the sick, give sight to the blind. Us, me, you. I, I want to tell you about a lady at the church that we've been in. Her name is Miss D. And she was the janitor. And she, she and her daughter volunteered. It's a single mother, never has had a husband. And um, sweetest people, they love Jesus. She, you know, she came into the kingdom of God right about the time her child was born. And um, the child loves the Lord. How old is Yaffa? 13? She's 13 years old. These people love the Lord. And you know, God uses the most unlikely people. Miss D started off just volunteering clean. She would just show up and if the doors were open, she'd walk in clean. And um, eventually that worked into a, a part-time position for her. Just her faithfulness made a way, but there was action to her faith. You know, we believe that faith without works is dead. There is no, there is no faith without works. And, you know, one of the works that we, one of the things that we work on is we confess what the Word says. That's our faith. That's the works that we put to our faith by speaking what the Word says. Well, Miss D and Yaffa went to visit um, her aunt. It was an old, old lady. And while they were there, the lady just did these awful gurgles and just... Uh, she died. The lady died. This was D's aunt. And D said, oh, no, oh, no, not on my watch. And she said, in Jesus' name, come back. And the lady just bolted back. This lady died. I'm talking the janitor at our church. The humble, sweet, trusted God. God did what she asked. You know, who did, who did um, the ch- early church put in charge of the tables in Acts, in the book of Acts? Stephen and Philip. They were, they were men of God. They, they chose men full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. <laughs> and who did the first miracles that everybody saw? It was them. Stephen and Philip, they, they were doing all kinds of stuff, and, and they weren't behind the pulpit. They were waiting on tables. You, you get, are you, you, do you get what I'm trying to say? If you are willing, God will use you. He doesn't just use the person behind the pulpit. And, and I want to be honest, Beat and I are usually not behind a pulpit. Our pulpit happens a lot of times at a laundromat, we'll, you know, or we'll go to a park and just talk to any victim we can come across. You know, you need to be bold. You need to know that God does what he says. You need to get over the heart sickness. You need to get to the place where the word of God is true and you're saying what the word of God says. If you don't say it, I'm telling you, it's just not going to happen for you. You must say the word. We, 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 just, we see it in Romans 10, 10. We believe unto righteousness, but we confess unto salvation. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Our words have power. Our words can kill us or build us up. Our words can change our world. And listen, you, army of God, you preachers, everyone here is a preacher. Everyone here is an evangelist. Everyone here is a healing minister. Everyone here carries the, excuse me, carries the good news. The good news. What's the good news? You don't have to be sick anymore. You don't have to be broke anymore. You can know God. That's the good news. You, can, you don't have to die and go to heaven to, to experience God. You know, in, in Psalms, it says, I would, have, I would have fainted had I not expected to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. That, that's one of those scriptures you have to just change, wrap your mind around. It's not all pie in the sky. It's goodness of God right now. I need to expect to see my prayers answered now, in this time. 
the goodness of God in the land of the living. Uh, Beata and I will quote that scripture a lot of times. You know, when we, get, when we get a little tired of walking, you know, and everybody has that, you just have to build yourself up. I would have fainted had I not expected to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. That's a scripture that you can stand on. You can expect to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Army of God. People of God. Do you know that God has no one else to use to change new roads but you? He has no one else that he can use to change Callie Gone Lane, but Murtis and Dan Fobb and Gwen and Russell Pole are. He wants to change your neighborhoods. He wants to change everything around it, and he wants to turn it into his image. He wants this place to be heaven on earth. He has no one else to use but us. We'd better get it right. Because you know what's going to happen? It prolongs his coming, and then another generation has to come. And another generation until somebody gets it right. That's what God is waiting on. God's heart is for people. You know, it's not that God's just tired and or oh, God, later. No, he has a specific plan. There is a specific day that he wants to see all of this wrapped up. And we can speed this up. We can make this go easier, better. We, we can bring in thousands and th think about it. Think, I'm, I'm being serious to you right now. You can affect thousands of people if you will start with one person. You don't know how big that person's circle of influence is that you're trying to minister to. But if you will have the boldness to go, to go to them, and I guess if anything's changed, we've just gotten to the point, I don't care what they think. I don't care what they think. We're talking to everybody. Wherever we go, you know, it's Jesus this, Jesus that. And there's some simple things you can do. If you go to Walmart and you see your, your person checking you out, speak kindly to them. Be kind. Don't be in a hurry. How's your day? Ask them, how's your day going? And, and we, how much longer you got? And they'll say, four hours. I know the Lord will give you the grace to see it through. And they'll laugh. You know, I said, I believe it. I, re I said, I, I really believe that. I believe God will give you the grace. I can't tell you how many times we pray with our cashier. And we're not trying to get him in trouble. I'm not, trying, I'm not talking a long, drawn-out prayer. We just grab, I said, may I pray with you? And we just grab hands. Lord, just bless them. Take care of them. Give them, give them joy today. I've seen women at the cashiers, you know, as a cashier, just tears coming down their eyes because somebody stopped and was nice to them, especially around Christmas time when everybody's angry. And, you know, and you wait in line 40 minutes, and you're just nice to them. You don't beat them up. Let's be the church. Let's be the love of God. You know, the Bible tells us that faith works by love. They, if you don't have love in your heart, if it's just me, 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 gimme, gimme, it's not going to work. It's the love of God that people see in you, and, and it's the love of God in you that just activates things. It, it makes you, it, it draws you to those around you. I'm wrapping up, but I, I want you to know we're the army. We're the ones God wants to use. There is a purpose for all this prosperity. There's a purpose for all this overflow. There's a purpose for all the blessings God has for us. It's so that we can see this thing wrapped up. God does not want anyone to perish. And he's chosen us. Listen, I was the only saved person I knew when I got saved. I'm serious. I, w I didn't know any other saved people. And, and, you know, I think back 40 years later, Lord, why did you choose me? I was the least competent person probably that he could have chosen. But it says he chooses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. So we're all in good company. He just chose a bunch of fools, you know. But listen, yeah, there's something about a fool. If a fool will learn, their, pa their, their, their pride is behind them, you know. <laughs> they, 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 we, we have to put our pride aside and just say, Lord, I take you at your word. I, I want to take on this commission. I, I want to challenge everybody in here today. I know that we've gone a little longer than you're used to, but this is, this is really important. I believe that this is what God wanted to say to you. When, when, I, when we were here on Wednesday night, that just rose up so much in my heart. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Um, there are a whole bunch of scriptures here that I didn't even get to. <laughs> but I, I want you to know, hope deferred makes your heart sick. If you have no confidence, you're just where the devil wants you. But if you begin to wisely pray, wisely pray and declare the word, begin to prophesy over your life and say, I am more than a conqueror. Um, th there was a time not too long ago, I, I was a little short with, with one of my kids. And I, I apologized and I went in the bathroom and I had to look myself in the mirror. And that was the hardest thing. 
you are more than, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I had to tell myself that in the mirror. I looked in my face and I looked in my own eyes in the mirror and it's just, all I wanted to do was look away because I didn't feel that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Because I had repented to my child. I said, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. If you will begin to use the word in your life in every situation, every situation, the word there, there it, it will change your life radically. I, I really believe that we've drawn a line in the sand. And, you know, it doesn't necessarily matter what I said. I believe that the Holy Spirit is ministering in your heart to some of those areas that, that maybe you've struggled with, some of those areas that you've been disappointed with. But if your heart has been sick, if your heart has been sick up until now, I want you to um, please just come to the altar. And, and this isn't for everybody, only for those who say, oh, Lord, yes, I want this to change. If your heart's been sick, if your hope's been deferred, if your confidence in the Word of God has been challenged, if it's been just resisted, why don't you come down here and just tell the Lord, Father, I want to do what you want me to do. Amen. Please stand up and, and let's just um, honor those who would want to do that. And you don't all have to come, but those who feel like this is my day, I'm drawing a line in the sand. So come. I'm drawing a line in the sand. I don't want to be the way I was. So if you'll just find a place here at the altar. I, I don't want to be the way I was. I don't want to live that way anymore. I want confidence, Lord. I want to experience your word. I want to have that 100%. You can just find a place and kneel down. I, we're we, we're going to let you just deal, you and God. You tell God what you want to see changed in your life. Be honest with Him and realize that the Word of God is your answer. Go back to the Word and know that He...